Uh, that's it. I just want to see my people. I want them to see me. I want them to meet each other. And I've invited some other very important people to speak before me. 15 minutes is a warm-up. We're going to have some vendors there, you know, like conservative people, uh, T-shirts, whatever. And um, you'll meet nice people. I'll tell you where, when, as time goes on. But it's going to be around April. I don't have the calendar. You see, I, I don't plan the... Hold on. Wait for me. Wait. Uh, play something for them. I'll get the calendar. Here it is. Right in front of me. See, I do have the calendar. Not so bad. Here it is. April 9th, 2016. Mark your calendar now. The week after uh, Easter. And uh, people are going to come from around the country for this one. So there it is. I mean, look, life goes on. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. And um, we just keep praying and hoping for the best. And we try our best to put the right people in power. And, oh, and it never works out. It's usually the worst and the dumbest rise to the highest places in the land. That's been my experience in most of my life. If I look back politically, who can I actually say was a president that I respected? When I was a boy, Dwight D. Eisenhower was president. Naturally, I looked up to him. He was a war hero. I didn't even have to question who he was. I knew he led the Allied invasion, the Allied invasion on D-Day. That's all I knew. I loved the man. I looked up to him. I felt safe in America. That's all I knew about politics as a kid. And I would say that what I felt as a kid for politics is what the average American feels for politics today. Do you actually, do you actually trust or feel safe with that person in office? And the answer with Obama is a resounding no. Nobody trusts him. Nobody feels safe with him. He's a snake, and nothing that he does is reliable. It's all a lie. So that, that's the fact of the matter. Now, now you go back to Bush, another snake. Another snake used the bumblingness to, to cover up his, his work for the CFR. The Council on Foreign Relations, uh, the Bilderbergs, whoever you want to call them. Those who really control the money in the world pick the president. So Bush was another one. Uh, at least he took the war to the enemy. Unfortunately, people would say he picked the wrong enemy. And as I wrote in a book in 2006, it could be the greatest military blunder in American history, and it was. I said, because if this goes wrong in Iraq, what we're going to see is a, is a new Persia emerge. Okay? And it did go wrong. And it, it was the unintended consequences. And so that was that. So now let's go back before him. Who was president before him? Why, it was Bill Clinton. Oh, oh that's ripe for a little discussion. But we'll skip right over Clinton. Let's go back to before Clinton. Who was president before him? Well, at some point, we're going to come back to Ronald Reagan, for whom uh, Reagan, for many people, was God. He was not God for me. I didn't think he was that great a president. There are those who were, again, glorifying him and turning him into more than a man. He was a good man up to a certain point, but he was not that great. And frankly, he did a lot of bad things. Not everything he did was so great, okay? Would I choose him today? Yes, 100%. Was he better than that whole slew of people I just mentioned? 100%. But was he perfect? No, he was just a man. So what am I saying to you as, as this hour comes to a kind of end? What I'm saying to you is let's not ask too much of our politicians. Because at the end of the day, they're only people, number one. They're not better than us. Many of them are not even as good as us. They're just what they are. And the word politician inherently has within it the word deceiver or liar. There's a very famous painting that I love to go and see at the museum here in San Francisco. No, it's not in the, this museum. It is actually, I think. I had it on my website years ago. It is set in colonial America, where a group of farmers are sitting around a cracker barrel, turned over, big barrel, like a wine barrel, a cracker barrel. And then there's a, you know, they're wearing farmer clothes. They look, they look scruffy. And then in the room, in this little room with six or eight farmers, there's a guy well-dressed with a nice suit on talking to them with great rhetoric. And the painting is called The Politician. <laughs> you know, so what does that say to you? What do you expect from these people? What do you actually expect from these people? Do you expect them to tell you the truth? They rep, they're put in power by bigger powers. Look at a guy like Rubio. You know he's a non-entity. Non non I'm not saying he's a bad person. Don't get me wrong. Probably a decent guy, but you know he's a non-entity. He's a zero. He's not known for anything. Has he invented anything? Has he built a business? Has he built a hospital? Has he performed an operation? He's not known for anything. So who is picking him? Sheldon Adelson, a billionaire Republican, and Larry Ellison, a billionaire Democrat. So ask yourself a question. Why would a billionaire Democrat and a billionaire Republican pick Rubio? They both want massive amounts of cheap labor 
It's a sit. They don't care beyond profit. If you own a hotel chain, you want cheap labor forever. You don't care what it does to America. If you have a software company and you're a software giant, you want to make sure your costs are as low as possible. You don't care how you devastate the American tech worker. You don't care. If you're Mark Zuckerberg, you don't care how many billions you have. There's not enough money in the world for a man like you. You're so narrow-minded. You're so focused only on the bottom line. You don't care what it does to America. So you cater to the illegal alien lobby. And the same goes true for the Democrat Party. They don't care about America. They care about votes. That's why Jerry Brown says that you're going to have automatic registration for voters in the Motor Vehicle Bureau. Okay, the Department of Mexican Voting. You can say it. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about these things? At a certain point, you almost have to be somewhat fatalistic or you'll lose your mind altogether. It doesn't mean you should ignore it. You know, but you could, you could burn up. If you do this day and night, the news is so bad. The politicians are so corrupt that at a certain point you have to have some comic relief or think about other things, which is why I try to entertain you a little bit tonight before this non-entity debate tonight. You know it's a stooge debate. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is 54 minutes after the hour. Listen, one moment, Savage Nation. And uh, people love my Bernie Sanders satire today. came up out of nowhere. I've done it before, but today was fun. So here's a question I think they would ask, they'd like to ask Bernie Sanders of me. Kurt on WBAP, what's your, what's your point today? Uh, my next question is from uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, presidential candidate for the United States of America. Uh, Mr. Senator, uh, first of all, I'm Anderson Blooper, if you've forgotten. I have a question for you on euthanasia and what your stance is. Uh, you're getting up there in years, and not to be rude, but at what age, Mr. Sanders, do you think we should consider euthanizing you? Two years, four, six? No, no that's, that's a typical right-wing question. I can tell right now you're a Republican. And the fact of the matter is euthanasia is a term created by the right wing in order to scare people. This is not euthanasia at all. This is a transition service offered by the government for people who are very unhappy or very sick. And that is a very, very compassionate thing to do. If a person is unhappy or very sick, they should be transi trans transitioned by a government to another state where things are better. It's that simple. Now, I don't believe in God. I was born Jewish, but I don't believe in anything Jewish. I don't believe in God. I don't believe there's a hereafter. But certainly to eliminate pain, I think it's a very good thing in order to be uh, assisted to move into another transition. Mr. S Mr. That's, that's all. Next case. WABC, Andrew, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, I love when you go into the Bernie Sanders. It makes me smile right away. I'm in traffic, and I'm, you know, it's gloop. It's gloom and doom, and it's like... <laughs> it is. It's day and night. It's horrible. Obama's a monster. The Congress is out of control. Right. A little comedy never hurt anybody. Oh, it reminds me of settled, settled law. And one time... You know, I that's important. We should pull it for the next hour. Because here they are attacking guns. Obama wants to do take our guns away. When his own stooge, Kagan, said it's settled law. It's settled law in that heavy New York, Brooklyn accent. When uh, she was trying to become Supreme Court Justice, they asked her about the Second Amendment. She said, it's set a lure. It's set a lure. Next hour, set a lure on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Back to the Savage Nation. This gives me a headache now after lunch. It's funny how I change from food. That's amazing. Before lunch, I may have liked it. But then the blood sugar goes to my stomach instead of my head. And now what I like before, I don't like now. So you're about to get a whole different show now in this hour on the Savage Nation. 
That's the beautiful thing about having mul multiple personalities, is it makes it very entertaining for people across America because they're not getting one show, they're getting three or four a day on this. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome to the third hour of the Savage Nation. Of course, all you're doing is if you're tuning in and out to see what's happening, and I've been doing a lot of good stuff about, you know, what are you getting so excited for? You know, it's a fake debate tonight. It's not 15 candidates vying for the truth. It's not going to be Martha Washington tearing Hillary Clinton to pieces, which would be appropriate, which would be to pit uh, the commie Sanders, the unknown Mally against her, but he's not going to do it. Sanders, are you kidding me? Or that narrator, whatever his name is, uh, Anderson Blooper. He's a lightweight. He's a lightweight. The guys there set up as a part of the government media complex, in my opinion. So I'll take your calls for this segment and give you the latest news on the program as things go on. Uh, the propaganda continues called news around the clock. The anti-Russian propaganda continues unabated from the snake in the White House. Report finds flight MH17 was down by a Russian-made missile from Ukrainian rebel territory. Now, I don't know whether it's true or false, but I know that there were rumors at the time that it was actually from the other side that the rocket came that shot the plane down. How do we know who really did it? We know that there's a war against Putin and Russia right now from the snake. So I don't know whether to believe it or not. So that's one thing. Netanyahu was marginalized by the snake. And as a result of Netanyahu being marginalized by the snake in the White House, the Palestinians are knifing Jews to death in the streets of Israel. But you're not reading about that. What can you do about it? Uh, nothing. It's that simple. It's time for the Jews to get out of the Middle East, according to this administration. Pack up their little valises and move. There's plenty of room for them elsewhere. After all, they're all troublemakers. After all, according to Obama's uh, preacher, Jeremiah Wright, there were no Jews in Israel when the Bible was written. They were Palestinians. So the whole world is upside down as a result of the snake who's changed the entire world. And it's depressing. So people don't want to listen to the news anymore. They don't want to listen to it, so they tune out. They go to entertainment and the sports. I don't blame them. So let's go to the callers. Jimmy on WABC, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? All right, Mike, you're a savior out there. I'm listening to this New York sports with the baseball. The Mets ought to do this. The Mets ought to do that. I put you on driving home. I'm laughing when you're doing that Bernie Sanders uh, uh, routine, which I think is... But you really have to be from New York to know how good it is, because Bernie Sanders is a classic type from New York in the 1940s and 50s. He's a, a street communist, a union organizer, and his voice is right out of the union organizing days. He's a, he's a low light, a, excuse me, a, a low ranking union type. That's all he ever has been. Right. And if you listen to people like Sanders and Hillary long enough, your brain will actually begin to vegetate. And tonight is going to be nothing. If they bash anybody, they'll be the Republicans. They're yeah, Republicans. there you go. Because Cooper's probably good. They worked the script out with the Hillary people. The folks from Arkansas already talked to a Cooper or Chappaqua, whatever. And they gave him the, gave him a script. It wouldn't last another day on CNN. Exactly. And they, I mean, if you really wanted a fair debate, there should be 10 Democrats ranging across the spectrum from Black Lives Matter to, a, let's say, a nationalist Democrat, if such a person exists anymore. And Hillary would be one of them, and she'd be in the middle. The whole thing is set up to, to, to feature her. Am I right or wrong? Mike, you're 100%. You, you, uh, your audience is growing. I got guys at work listening to you now. They tune off the nonsense talk, sports talk. They listen to you once in a while because their brains are starting to vegetate with all that sports. But the thing is, they love these wars because the wars create refugees, and they want to wreck Europe, Australia, and the United States. That Western civilization right now has a giant steel ball, go, wrecking ball, going through it. And, it, and who's swing, and who's swinging the crane? Well, obviously, the people who hate America, whoever has a deep seated hatred of America, is doing it. It could be anybody. It, their, their hatred of this country, you can't even describe it. The but, who, but the hatred inside the political establishment is almost as great as the hate, hatred coming from outside. Of course, it's, it's identical. It's, 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 it's identical. So I see, I call this the progressive Islamist alliance in my new book, Government Zero. I must say, to me, it's not a, a, a new story. I've seen the progressives and the Islamists moving toward the same end from different sides in a pincer movement to destroy Western civilization. And both of them are racing to the finish line to see who gets there first. And both of them have a vision of the future that's apocalyptic, by the way. Right. I mean, it's pretty heavy, and the average guy doesn't want to hear it. You have a question that you would ask of Bernie Sanders? Let's see if I can channel him for a minute. What would you ask Bernie? No, he's not there. All right. 
Thank you for calling. Copy of Government Zero goes out to you. Uh, okay. Brian has a question for Bernie 